All right, I'm back. Young Justice episodes seven through nine. Review. These episodes for me were a bit more boring than previous episodes. Although they do cover a lot of information. A lot of information. We finally get the explanation for the VR tech that I was talking about. I felt like was going to come into play at some point, And it turns out Granny Goodness is behind it. She goes on Gordon Godfrey's show, and he starts trying to complain about the tech, which is a very smooth move because they're both agents of Apocalypse, agents of Dark Side. So he's over here trying to talk crap about her VR, how it's poisoning the mind of children, and she's just like, well, that's not the case, and yada, yada, yada. And then she talks about a recent charity with Wayne and her company helping out the meta-human trafficking, which she is also a part of. Yeah, spoilers everywhere in here. Uh, so the first episode is really, it really bored me the way we had this sort of sabbatical, this beach. The team's on the beach, the, our main team, they're on the beach, and they're just chilling, and then they get some training and that's pretty much all you get from the main team while on the other side we're getting this whole war world defending earth from uh the starro and all that and getting this whole vandal savage history where it was genghis kong and you know he was the original human and there's this rich history where they talk about he's pretty much like the first meta human and he branched out to make other meta humans and him and his children were special, and Darkseid showed up and tried to fight them, and they came to a truce because he was oppressed with Vandal Savage, and they came to a truce that ends up being where, when Apocalypse and Earth are like the last world standing, they'll, they'll come to that final battle that told them to have a truce between the two that they uphold. And we can see that Vandal Savage in charge of War World. He has Mongol in a cell and tons of other cells. Who knows who's, who else is in there. Uh, also in the flashbacks to his history, we get to see that Naboo was one of his sons. Dr. Fade, the helmet and all that. Of course, it's not like really the original. But it, his son wore the helmet of Naboo and went by the name Naboo. That this episode I didn't find too interesting. I I found the stuff going on on the beach. Some of it was funny, but for the most part, it didn't really entertain me. And the stuff going on with world, the whole world, world defending Earth and Vandal Savage being in charge of it, I didn't find all that too interesting. At first, I was wondering why am I getting this stuff until like it was really revealed that. You know, that's the origin of the light, the criminal organization behind all this stuff. That's the origin of the metahumans. Uh, so, that stuff was pretty interesting, but for the most part, the episode just kind of bored me sick. But it did go to a pretty dark place there at the end. With what he did to his original daughter, it was pretty shocking. Uh... Pretty cold, pretty heartless, and I'm pretty sure that's going to have consequences with his younger daughter. Uh, and the next episode that follows, we got like kind of scattered. Different teams doing different things. You had Robin, spoiler, uh, Orphan, and Arrow, Red Arrow, or Arrowette, whatever you want to call her. Uh, we had them, uh, like, stalking Jarvis, Tech Jarvis, Mad Hatter, and Clayface was posing as him, and then it led back to what Mad Hatter was really doing, and they tried to take him down. Uh, we also had a situation where they tried to free Brick, who was jailed a couple episodes ago. They were trying to transport him. They came under attack of Abracadabra, and... <laughs> sports master and most of them didn't escape they only escaped with one of them and, I, and we also had 
treasure finally back here a uh, scene between her and Artemis talking about she needs to go visit her son that also we got to see Livewire the wire that's pretty great uh, and then we got into another mission with Livewire and Nightwing and them all going at it and Halo and G-Force or whatever his name is I'm not too familiar with that guy but <laughs> they bonded you can tell they're really bonding they're getting close and personal and Black Lightning had some fun that <laughs> fun this episode too uh, there were some pretty obvious sexual jokes earlier in this episode by Livewire and Shade uh, I didn't find this episode too interesting at first either because I kept skipping around to different teams doing different missions and I was trying to understand well, how does this all tie in together? And then everybody meets up at the Batcave, and it does all tie in together. You had different teams running different missions, separately, isolated, to appear as if they're not connected, to operate more like the light, and they're still keeping the Justice League, for the most part, in the dark. And all this really weighs heavy on Wonder Woman. It's like, are all you comfortable with lying and all that? And was this really necessary? And Batman's like, well, if we don't do it this way, I mean, do you think Clark's kind of, Superman's going to be able to just flat out lie? Uh, and then we got into some action with Lobo. Lobo actually got in a pretty big fight. It was pretty brutal. Halo got taken down again, killed in a brutal fashion again, so... I expect that to happen every so often since she can just resurrect it. Uh, but Forger also had some pretty funny and devastating stuff. Like there's a scene where you think he gets murdered and it's pretty gruesome. It's pretty <laughs> disgusting and Lobo thinks he he's did it. He's the, did the job. Uh, uh, and Lobo leaves thinking he did the job and also in this episode you have Orm one thing I really liked is you get to see all the kids of the superheroes like all their little babies you get to see the Tornado Twins Flash and Iris's kids uh, you get to see the best part you get to see Lois show up with little baby Jonathan that that really surprised me and caught me off guard that was awesome uh that to me was probably the highlight of the whole damn thing and finally getting you know in that episode nine that's when you finally get that payoff to the tech the virtual tech the the whole uh that granny goodness is behind that i'm, fi I'm glad they finally you know, explain that, but in this episode, Orm is planning to kill all the Justice League wives and babies, and then Lady Shiva, on behalf of the Light, makes a move against him because he's trying to do a nuclear option, and they don't want the Justice League to just flat out kill all the members of the Light, so yeah, Orm gets it pretty bad. And following that, you know, you have the meeting at the end where it shows all the members of the light come together and they're talking about everything they've been doing. We finally get to see behind the curtain what it's all about, what are all the little chess moves they're doing. Uh, for the most part, it, it was pretty interesting. But for some reason, I just, even though it revealed a lot and paid off a lot, I just did not find these episodes as interesting as previous episodes. I found them kind of boring, but I got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of personal stuff that <coughs> making the day really difficult. But there was some pretty good funny lines in here, and we got to see a lot of characters that we didn't really get to see. We got, you know, Tim Drake, Robin, and we got Spoiler, and Arrowhead, or Red Arrow, I can't remember what she goes by. Uh, Orphan, I'm not familiar with Orphan. Uh, 
and seeing Livewire in here, that was great. Seeing her and uh, Black Lightning go up against each other, that was pretty cool. Uh, Mist, I found her pretty interesting. <laughs> like over there trying to choke Nightwing out. And, and like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't want to do this. That, that was cool. Uh, Aqualad finally came into play. We got to see a little Shazam. Uh, we got to see like Wally jump in his suit. And, you know, we got a lot of characters throughout this. That was pretty good. Hopefully, we get to see more characters. I'm really enjoying seeing, you know, Nightwing as the centerpiece of all this because I'm a big Nightwing fan. Uh, that. You know, I guess I'd rate all these episodes about the same, a 5 out of 10. It did reveal a lot and stuff that I, I just wasn't too entertained by that, but that may be what everything going on here kind of affecting uh, my enjoyment level of the episode. Anyways, uh, 5 out of 10 on all these. I'm not monetized. If you want to, if you'd like to support my channel, uh, check out my GoFundMe link and my PayPal link. Those are ways to do so. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, ring that bell for notifications uh, for any future videos I do. But check out my other videos. And stay awesome. Welcome.